Hi, it's Danielle and today I'm coming to you from the Pangolin Toby Hotel in Kasane. Today I'll be talking about how to set up a Nikon D750 for wildlife photography. Before I continue, please remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon at the bottom to make sure you receive notifications about our next videos. Here we have the Nikon D750 with a 300mm fixed lens, 2.8 on. I'll start with the lens. Firstly, make sure that on your lens you're shooting on autofocus. All right, so there should be a switch on the lens if you're shooting on autofocus. Then on the camera as well, on the side of the, of the D750 is a little toggle, autofocus and manual focus. So make sure it's pointing towards AF. 99.9% .9 of the time we shoot on autofocus. Then when we get to the camera dial, I shoot, personally I shoot in manual on auto ISO for most of the time, depending on what we're shooting, but mostly I put it to, to manual. Also on that same dial, you'll see there's between continuous and single shooting, I shoot on continuous high, meaning the fastest frame rate possible. Then if we go to the menu, if you look at the back of my screen, you'll see that I'm in manual. I've chosen my shutter speed, I've chosen my f-stop. I always shoot in full frame mode. You can put it on DX as well, but I prefer to shoot in full frame with a full frame camera. Then that's my frame rate. Then I shoot in auto white balance. So I shoot in raw, so I, that's why I choose my white balance to be automatic and to fix it afterwards in Lightroom. As I mentioned, I shoot in RAW most of the time if I shoot wildlife. On the side of the D750, you'll see a little button saying quality, and that's where you can change your quality to go from RAW to JPEG if you want to. I leave it on RAW. You've got all the options for JPEG, RAW and JPEG, but in the end, I leave it on RAW. Okay. Then. I shoot on continuous autofocus, really important. If you press that little, where the dial was on the left hand side, where I toggled from manual to autofocus, in the middle of that toggle, there's, a, there's a, a button that you press. And when you press it in, that menu comes up. I, if you use your back dial, you'll see a change in between continuous autofocus, auto and single autofocus. I leave it on continuous. I don't shoot wildlife on AFS because I don't want the camera to focus once off and then my subject moves towards me and the camera loses focus. If it's on continuous autofocus, it means that it'll continuously pick up the subject. Um, as long as I hold my, my focus point on the subject, it'll keep focusing and the subject will stay sharp whether it's moving across the screen or towards me. It's also nice to know that you can use AFC for stationary subjects as well. It doubles up because if the subject isn't going anywhere and you hold your focus down, then it'll still focus. As soon as the subject starts moving, then it'll still focus on the subject. So it can be used for stationary as well as moving subjects, which is why I leave it on AFC for most of the time. Then when I press that switch again, and instead of turning the back command dial, I turn the front dial, you'll see the AF area mode changing. Okay, now this is personal preference what you shoot on. Personally, I mostly shoot on that one, which is group. You'll see four little squares together. Group or single point focus. That's my preferred two. I know a lot of people prefer shooting on the dynamic ones the 9 point, the 21 point, or the 51 point. It's really up to you. What I like about the group focus, which is that one, is it activates five focus points at the same time, including the center focus point. And it gives equal weighting to all five, as well as to the closest subject. So it hardly ever allows you to pick up the background instead of the subject. 
So for fast moving subjects, to track the subjects, I like to use group autofocus points or autofocus area mode because your chances of getting the subject sharp are much better. The other one that's auto area where the camera picks up what it wants to pick up so it'll choose an area for you which I never shoot on because I, I don't like the camera choosing for me. Then your single point is really um, effective for birds, bigger birds that you can pick up easily and hold your point on because remember it's only one point so you have to be very specific on your focus. And then your dynamic area, your 9, your 21 and your 51 points. Basically that means that the camera picks up the subject, you have to pick up the subject with your center fo focus point first and all the surrounding points will then act when the subject moves off of that focus point. Then it'll kick in in those points but it's, it's, it's important to remember that you have to pick up the subject first and lock focus with your center with your the focus point in the middle your strongest focus point by the way and then if the subject moves off of that point it'll use one of the either 9, 21 or 51 other points to focus and that's why I like group because it gives equal weighting to all five points instead of giving weighting to the to the middle point and then using the surrounding points. 3D is the other option that you have in AFC and that means that your, your focus point will actually move around. So it won't, you don't have to move and keep the focus point on the subject. So for birds in flight for example it works well. The, you'll see when you look through your viewfinder and it's on 3D and you, and you focus that your, your point will move around as long as it stays in that autofocus area that you have, as long as it doesn't go too far off to the side, it'll pick up the bird. I find it to be effective, I know it's a, it's a love-hate relationship that some people have with that area mode. 3D tracking works well for me when there's nothing else in the scene moving. So basically when you've got a bird against the sky it works really well, but when the bird flies across some reeds that are blowing in the wind, or you have a moving background, then 3D tracking sometimes picks up the reeds that are swaying in the wind or the water, the waves or something like that. So I like 3D tracking when it's one subject on a very clear uncluttered background, then it works really well. So those are all the, the area modes in AFC. I wouldn't suggest shooting on AFS because your subjects in wildlife mostly move and you don't know when they're going to move. So stick it on AFC, leave it on AFC, test out all the modes. As I say, my favorite is at the moment, I find group to be really effective or single point, one of those two. When you're in AFC, it's also important to go into your menu and make sure under your custom setting menu, which is your pencil on the left hand side, if you go into autofocus, you'll see A1. It says AFC priority selection. Now that basically means does the camera take the shot when it's focused or when you press the, the button. I like to leave it on release. I don't like the camera to only shoot once it's focused because it is a hit and miss sometimes in wildlife and you want the hit to, you want the camera to release even if it's not focused because the next shot which is straight afterwards, it might pick it up and be in focus. And it's just, I just find my, my keeper rate a little bit higher when I set it to release and not, not to focus. Then what I also do is I use back button focus personally. I know that's also a topic of discussion. So you're welcome to comment below, which is your favorite. If you use your shutter release button or if you use your back button as your focus button. But I use my back button to focus. My, this button you can set up as your, as your focus button. And, and then I use my shutter release only for shooting. So I track and follow as long as you hold it in on AFC, it keeps following your subject, it tracks your subject under your focus point, and then you shoot continuously with your shutter button. To set up back button focus, this button as your back button, if you don't want to use your shutter release button, go into your menu to custom settings, again under your pencil icon, and then you go to controls, your F menu, go to F4, you'll see it says assign AEL AFL button and that's this one over here. Then you can say if you press it and it gives you a lot of options, it says 
You can use it as an exposure lock, you can use it as an exposure lock if you hold it only, you can use it as a focus lock. I set it to AF on and that means that every time I press or hold my AEL AFL button it's going to be used as the focus button and I can shoot with my shutter button, my shutter release button as a shooting only, focus and shooting. Then metering mode is really important as well. I stick to my my matrix metering for most of the time. I don't use my spot and my center weighted metering too much except if there's a high contrast situation then I do but for general purposes I stick to to matrix metering and it's called evaluative metering on Canon. Each brand has their own name for it but on, on Nikon it's called matrix metering and that's my chosen metering system. Please do leave me comments if you do have a D750 and you have any other suggestions or any comments on your setup for wildlife, I'd love to hear them and, and chat to you about them. Until next time, have a good day. Bye-bye.